Before we get to the main topic of this lesson, which has to do with these three graphs, I want to remind you of the difference between a change in demand on the one hand and a change in quantity demanded on the other hand. I use the word remind because I think you learned this in Principles of Economics. A change in demand means a shift from one demand curve to another demand curve. A change in quantity demanded is a movement along a demand curve from one point, for instance, that to another point. A change in quantity demanded is caused by a change in price. A change in demand is caused by something else. Changes in price cause a change in quantity demanded. The demand doesn't shift position. A change in anything other than price that affects the demand for a commodity causes a change in demand. For example, a change in income would cause a shift in the demand curve or finding out that one commodity improves health and you didn't know that it did before would be a shift in the demand curve. So that would be a change in demand. It wouldn't be a change in quantity demanded. That's the way we use these, these terms. So a change in demand is a shift in the demand curve. A change in quantity demanded is a movement along a single demand curve. With that out of the way, we can approach the main topic of this lesson which is adding demand curves. So we've thoroughly studied now where demand curves come from for each individual. What I've drawn on the left-hand part of the screen is a demand curve for person A and a second demand curve for person B. And we want to find out how to add them to get the demand curve for person A plus person B. We're often interested in so-called aggregate demand curve. The word aggregate means the total. So it would be, in this example, the sum of person A plus person B. The wrong way to do this is the following. You see that person A has intercepts, has, has vertical intercepts at, at vertical intercept at 2 and person B has a vertical intercept at 4 and so the wrong way to do it is to say 2 plus 4 is 6 person A has an x-intercept of 2 and person B has an x-intercept of 4 so you say 2 plus 4 is 6 you put 6 on the x and you draw a demand curve like this this is not right. And we'll see why. The right way to do it is to ask, for any certain price, what is the quantity demanded for A, person A, what is the quantity demanded for person B, and then what's the quantity demanded of A plus B. So let's take a price that's above 4. At a price above 4, which is, which is over here, person A clearly doesn't demand anything. Person B doesn't demand anything either because the price of 4 is where, where the demand curve hits the axis, so anything higher than 4, the demand is going to be 0. So at a price higher than 4, person A doesn't want anything, and person B doesn't want anything, so nobody wants anything, so person A plus B is going to be 0. And therefore, on the person A plus B graph, we can draw a zero at a price higher than four and actually at a price equal to four. Now let's do a price equal to three. So I'll use a different color here. So at a price equal to three, person A is demanding nothing. Person B, however, is demanding something at a price of three. Let's see what that is and I'm going to pause just to draw these lines. So now I've drawn lines 
dashed lines would show that person three, person B at a price of three dollars would consume, would demand one unit of good X. So at a price of three, person A is demanding zero, person B is demanding one, zero plus one is one, so person A plus person B at a price of three demands one. So in the person A plus person B graph, at, for a price of three, you have a quantity demanded of one. Recall that for a price of four, you had zero. Let's take another price. Take a price of two. At a price of two, person A demands zero. Person B at a price of two demands two. So at a price of two, person A is demanding zero, person B is demanding two, zero plus two is two, so the aggregate demand at a price of two would be two. So in the aggregate demand curve for a price of two, you have a quantity of two. Now let's go to a price of one. At a price of one, person A is demanding one, so person A is now in the market, he's, he's demanding more than zero, and at a price of one, person B is demanding three. So person A is demanding one, person B is demanding three, one plus three is four, so at a price of one, the aggregate demand is four. Finally, at a price of zero. At a price of zero, person A is demanding two, person B is demanding four, zero plus four is six, and so at a price of zero, the aggregate demand is six. We can now connect the dots. And we get an aggregate demand curves, curve that looks as follows. So you can see to what extent the graph in the lower right that, that I indicated was wrong was actually wrong. The the incorrect graph shows that at a price of, let's say, 5, there's some positive quantity demanded. But you see that in the correct graph, for a price of 5, nobody's in the market. A's not in the market, B's not in the market, so A plus B's not in the market. So the wrong graph is just not the right way to do it. You also notice that at prices above 2, the person A plus person B graph is the same as the person B graph, because person A is not in the market at prices above 2. The slope of both person A's demand curve and person B's demand curve is minus 1, the way I've drawn it, and you can see that in the aggregate demand curve, the slope is minus 1 between prices of 2 and 3, because it's exactly the same slope as person B's. Below a price of 2, the slope is not equal to minus 1. Person A's slope is minus 1, person B's slope is minus 1, but the aggregate demand, for example, if you wanted to compare in this point, with this point and calculate rise over run to get the slope. The rise is 0 minus 2. The run is 6 minus 2. So you have minus 2 over 4, which is minus 1 half. So the slope here is minus 1 half, which is closer to 0, in other words, flatter, than the slope of either of the individual's demand curve. And that's the typical result, that when you add demand curves, you get a flatter slope. One of the reasons why 
This notion of adding demand curves can be confusing is because it contradicts the way that you learned how to add functions in mathematics classes. In mathematics classes, if you have some function f of x and some other function g of x, uh, let me draw that a bit differently, then the way you were taught to add functions was the following. Start with a particular x value, measure the f distance and the g distance, and then add it up. Get another x value, measure f distance, g distance, and add that up. Get another x value, f distance, g distance, add it up. And then the answer is f plus g of x. Sorry, this is getting a little confusing there. That's called a vertical addition occurs. And you do that not only in math class, but in almost all other instances where you want to add curves. But economists need to add demand curves horizontally. So what I showed on the lower, uh, on the left-hand part of the screen with these three graphs is a horizontal summation of demand curves. You started with, you started with a certain price, and then got this person's demand and got that person's demand and added them up to get the total demand. So that was a horizontal summation, not a vertical summation. The reason this is different than the math example is because in mathematics, you always put the independent variable on the horizontal axis. In other words, you put the variable we, we call the cause. on the horizontal axis, and you put the effect, or the dependent variable, on the vertical axis. And that's usually what economists do too, but not with demand and supply curves. With demand and supply curves, the causal variable is the price of x. That's the, that's the cause. And the effect of the price of x is the quantity demanded of x. So that's the effect. So when supply and demand curves, cause and effect are flipped. The cause is put on the vertical axis and the effect on the horizontal axis. Whereas in every other graph that you ever studied, cause is put on the horizontal axis and effect is put on the vertical axis. And that's the reason why when you're adding demand and supply curves, you don't follow what you learned in math class, but instead you, d you do a horizontal summation because we have cause and effect flipped. Now, it's natural to ask, why do economists flip cause and effect just for demand and supply curves? Whereas economists don't flip cause and effect for any other curves, and nobody else in all of science and engineering or social science or whatever ever flips the curves. It's a historical reason. When Alfred Marshall wrote The Principles of Economics, which was the first neoclassical economics textbook in the late 19th century, he put effect on the horizontal axis and cause on the vertical axis. In particular, he, he put price on the vertical axis and quantity on the horizontal axis. And I'm not exactly sure why he did that. I think it has something to do with the fact that he was analyzing not only perfect competition, but also imperfect competition, where a firm can think that it can affect price, and therefore price might actually be an effect, and and uh, quantity might be the cause. So a firm, an imperfectly competitive firm, knows that if it, it can change its quantity, and therefore it affects the price that it gets. But for our purposes with perfect competition, <coughs> price is always a cause, quantity is always an effect. So it's an unusual situation, and you just need to be aware that you, economists uh, need to add demand curves and supply curves horizontally. Demand curves and supply curves always have to be added horizontally.